Throughout history, many people have claimed to have encountered giants. Greek titans, various Norse giants, the Chinese giant Pangu, and the biblical giants Goliath and Anak are all examples of stories about extremely large beings from various cultures. This has led many to wonder if real giants ever existed. One example which has been suggested as a possibility is the giant of Patagonia. Patagonia is a region located at the southernmost tip of South America, shared by Argentina and Chile with the Andes Mountains as its dividing line. A Dutch captain by the name of Seabolt de Viet mentioned that his crew saw several giants while they were sailing through the Straits of Magellan. Even the Vatican apparently has recorded documents that mentions giants in South America which were killed by the Aztecs. The body of this giant is not only remarkable due to its enormous size, but also due to the fact that it possesses two heads. Could this Patagonian giant be real? Stick around till the end of the video as we unravel the unusual story behind the discovery of this giant. You may not believe in giants or monsters, and you may not be afraid of them, but these creatures are essential to how humans make sense of the world. For millennia, whenever people have come across a scientific or natural phenomenon that they don't understand, they have created a monster to explain it. Take for example fossils. Some 2000 years ago, Scythian gold miners in the Gobi Desert stumbled upon skeletons with beaks, claws and broad shoulder blades jutting out of the sand. They couldn't imagine the creature that belonged to those bones, so they made one up. The griffin, half eagle, half lion and fierce protector of hidden gold what they'd found was probably a protoceratops. Experts on the other hand have discovered countless legends and accounts from history that tell of ancient giants, including photographic evidence and an equal number of initial newspaper reports of their discovery. One of these finds is Cap Dois, which not only matches the initial claims but also has remained in mainstream historical research. Cap Dois, which translates roughly as two heads in Malay, is the mummified remains of a two-headed giant captured by Spanish sailors off the coast of Argentina in the 17th century. Cap Dois is said to be a Patagonian giant who stands 12 feet 3.66 meters tall. For a very long time, people believed that Patagonia was a land that was inhabited by giants. The legend of the Patagonian giants stems from a story relayed by explorer Ferdinand Magellan. Magellan and his men made a stop on the South American shores and then they set out to explore the area. It is said that as they investigated the area, they came across inhabitants that were approximately twice as tall as a normal man. This is most likely due to the fact that a few of the region's indigenous peoples, particularly the Tualche, were taller than the average European at the time. This height disparity could have been exaggerated, contributing to the long-held European belief that Patagonia was a land of giants. Is it possible though that there were a few true giants in Patagonia and that Cap Dois is one of them? There are two competing origin stories for Cap Dois. According to the first, Cap Dois was discovered by Spanish soldiers on the beaches of Patagonia in around 1673. He was captured and hauled aboard their ship where he was lashed to the mast. When he managed to free himself from the mast, he was killed by a pike piercing his chest. His body was then mummified and stuffed before making its way to Britain and later the United States in the 19th century when it became the topic of several sideshows and freak shows as a spectacle of the unknown world. According to the second story, the giant was discovered dead on a beach with a spear through his chest. According to this version of the story, his body was discovered by natives of Paraguay who mummified it and honoured it in a sort of religious ceremony. At some point after this, the British schooner captain George Bickle heard about it. He sneaked into Paraguay and took the body with him. He took the body and transported it to Britain with him. But both stories end the same way. The body ends up in the hands of showmen who add it to their collection of curiosities. However, in the end, the oddity made its way to Weston's Burnbeck Pier in 1914, which is located in North Somerset, England. It was there and it remained for the subsequent 45 years until Lord Thomas Howard obtained it in 1959. After he purchased the Cap Dois, it would then change hands a few more times until eventually making its way to Bob's Sideshow at the Antique Man Limited in Baltimore, which is owned by Robert Gerber and his wife. The mummified body still remains to be a mystery to onlookers today. However, is a 12-foot two-headed giant even possible? Although discovering a real two-headed giant seems as unlikely as locating a real dragon or troll, it is not as unlikely as it sounds. 
First, let's take a look at the peculiar height of the creature. There have been people of unusual stature due to the condition known as gigantism. The tallest person in recorded history for which there is indisputable evidence is Robert Wadlow, 1918 to 1940, who was 8 feet 11 inches, 2.47 meters tall, and still growing when he suddenly died at the age of 22. Although people have been found who are over 8 feet tall, no living people or skeletal remains, for which the evidence is beyond dispute, have been found that are 12 feet tall. Even though it is theoretically possible for a human to reach that size, the increasing risks associated with one's health make it extremely unlikely for anyone to reach that height and survive. Wadlow died as a result of blisters on his feet caused by the immense weight on them. These blisters eventually became infected and he died as a result of infection-related complications. These health problems would only become more severe for a person who was 12 feet tall. There have also been reports of people and animals with multiple heads. Conjoined twins can form due to a condition known as dicaphilic parapagus, which causes the twins to appear to have one body and two heads. Again, most cases do not survive infancy, let alone adulthood, but there are a few exceptions. The most well-known examples are the Italian brothers Giovanni and Giacomo Battista Tocci and the American sisters Abby and Brittany Hensel from Minnesota. Dicaphilic Parapagus twins have a better chance of survival if their vital organs are doubled, so that each twin has a separate heart, stomach, set of lungs and so on. Dicaphilic Parapagus twins can thus become biologically successful adults, but this is extremely rare. If we are to believe that Captoir is real, then we must simultaneously assume two outcomes that are extremely improbable. We'd have to assume that Dicaphilic Parapagus twins were born with another rare and life-shortening disorder, gigantism, and that they overcame all of the health issues associated with both conditions to become full-fledged adults strong and healthy enough to engage in combat with a band of sailors. While this is not impossible, it makes the story much more unlikely and necessitates far more evidence. The body was examined by physicians in 1960s who stated that it showed no obvious signs of being a fake. No other experts appear to have examined the body to determine whether it is genuine or whether it possessed the internal anatomical requirements to survive as a pair of dicaphilic parapagus twins. Giants are also mentioned in the Book of Genesis. The Book of Genesis contains some of Western culture's most famous origin myths, including God's creation of the heavens and earth, Adam and Eve eating the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, and God commanding Noah to collect two of every animal to survive the Great Flood. Among these more well-known stories, however, is an intriguing and somewhat perplexing account of fallen angels and a race of superhuman giants roaming the earth. The entire wild story is contained in three verses at the beginning of Genesis chapter 6. According to the King James Version, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. The term for these giants and mighty men in the original Hebrew is Nephilim, which is derived from the Hebrew Nephal, which means to fall. This race of giants, born of unholy unions between divine sons of God, i.e. angels, and mortal daughters of men, is better translated as the fallen ones in that sense. While the giant Nephilim are barely mentioned in the Genesis story, they are a source of great interest in later apocalyptic literature, particularly the Book of Enoch. In that text, which was not included in the Bible, a group of lustful angels conspire to sleep with human women, giving birth to a race of giants who devastate God's creation so completely that he is forced to send the floodwaters and wipe earth clean. Are giants real? Is Capdois merely a myth or did he actually exist as a giant? Tell us about it in the comments section down below.